where do you live? That's an awkward question. I'm not going to actually ask you where you live. But um, if I did ask you that, uh, your answer might be, you know, I live at this street and this street. Um, you might give me like a cross street on, on where you live, or, or at least your address. Um, if I was to ask you where a certain chemical was on the periodic table, that might be a tough question to, to answer. It's a little tough to give people coordinates on where an element is. Well, this lesson, uh, very briefly, will just cover how we talk about where things are on the periodic table. Um, if I was to ask somebody um, to give me directions to the school, the school is uh, at the corner of Sunnyvale, Saratoga, and um, Fremont um, Avenue. So that's the cross street um, of Fremont High. Well, where's the cross street for, uh, or the coordinates for um, a particular element? Well, we'll learn how to do that by using these two terms, groups and periods. Periodic, the word periodic means uh, kind of like repeated pattern. So if we're looking at um, the periodic table, we're looking at a bunch of repeated patterns that happen over time in, uh, or that happen uh, throughout the table. And some, some patterns that we want to look at um, require that we also uh, understand kind of where things are um, coordinate wise. So how do we set that up? Well, there's basically in any given, you know, system like this, you need to have uh, a way to basically name the rows and the columns. So a row is always going to be horizontal. And we would call a horizontal row a period in the periodic table. There are seven of them, one through seven. And here they are on the side. And this will help you understand where something is. If I say, look for an element in period seven, you would know to look at everything in this row. Now, uh, the groups are up at the top and uh, we'd, we'd call a group, a, col a column is a group, right? They're sort of the same thing, but in chemistry, we call them groups. So you won't hear me say like, look at column two, you'll hear me say, look at group two. Um, another term that we'll sometimes use is, use is the word family. Um, that's not as common, but you'll sometimes see that in a textbook or something, you know, family uh, 14 or something like that. But the reason is because the group number or the family number actually it, uh, has um, a similar, there are similarities to the families of elements that um, they're chemically sim similar. So everything that's in group two right here um, all react similarly when in the presence of uh, other types of, of chemicals. Um, and there's a reason for that, which we'll discover a little later. But we call them families because they uh, react the same. Um, group, though, is the, better, is the better term for them. So group number is written on the top here. And I'll go ahead and circle them for you in blue. Group one, group two, group three, four, five, all the way to group 18. Okay. So just remembering how uh, they're set up. If I was to give you a little quiz here, I'll hide the word group and period and see if you can remember. Let's go ahead and delete some of this. Okay. If you'll find the element that's in group two, period seven. Okay, so that should be that element right there, radium, Marie Curie's element. Um, how about the, and that's because group two is right there, the vertical column, and period seven is down there. Okay, how about uh, the element that's in group 18, period two? Okay, it should be neon. And that's because group 18 is up here at the top and uh, period two is right there. Let's do one more. Which element is in group one, period five? Okay, group one, period five, rubidium. So it's just like coordinates in like math or like a, on a map or something. That's how we identify where an element is. But not only that, um, the groups have similar chemistry to them, 
So everything that's in group 13, for the most part, will react the same way as uh, the one on top of it and the one below it. They react similarly. Um, there's some exceptions to that rule, but that's the way that the periodic table is set up to help you understand a little bit more about the chemistry of an element before you've even studied that element. Um, this is reflected in your activity. So in the gizmo, they're going to tell you, look in group one, okay? And uh, period three, um, you'll find uh, the element um, sodium, group one, period three. And if I looked in group two, period three, I'd look, I'd see magnesium. And you notice that the group number um, over here in the top left corner is cha uh, top right corner is changing uh, as I click these parts of the of the um, of the period. So here I'm in group 18 because I'm all the way to argon uh, and down here. So if I would go back and grab the um, the PDF here with the periodic table. Here's neon, it's in group 18 and um, and group two, and period two. Sorry, I misspoke. So uh, group 18 and period two, and then you see over here, neon is in group 18, period two. So that's kind of the way that this um, gizmos is set up so that you have um, kind of that crosshairs idea going on. It's a little confusing at first, but once you kind of get the hang of it, you see how it's set up. So that's the basic uh, overflow overview of um, uh, the periodic table and the naming of like the groups and the periods. I hope that's helpful.